In this second lecture, we will talk about the numerical methods that we use in solving partial differential equations. But the question arises, why we need these numerical methods? As you know that when we move towards research problems, or I should say in physical problems, then we do not have analytical techniques available. No exact solution is available to us. So we solve the problems, partial differential equation or ordinary differential equation by using numerical methods. So there are three famous numerical methods. The first one is finite difference method, FDM. The second one is finite volume method that we are going to discuss this method in this lecture series. And the third one is finite element method. Every numerical method has its own pros and cons. We will talk about that later on. Sometime we also add spectral method in this series, in this list, spectral methods. So let me just give you a brief introduction of all these numerical methods. The first one is finite difference method. Suppose we have a continuous domain. From A to B. And then this domain is. Divided into the nodes which are called discrete points or discretization when we have these discrete points, for example. This process of making discrete points is called discretization. It depends either we are using spatial discretization or temporal discretization. In this case, we are discretizing the domain or space variable. That's why it is called spatial discretization. Spatial, the spelling of spatial discretization is like this, spatial discretization. What happens in finite difference method? We have all the information available on the nodes. For example, at this node, we have domain. And on the right end point, we have the boundary point And the value is available to us. For example, this one has at the right end point, we have this value. On the interior, we have some other values. For example, here we have this value, that one, and that one. Left end point, we have y of, for example, y of a. And on the right end point, we have y of b, for example, is equal to beta, y of a is equal to alpha. And all the other values 
are given over here. For example, this one is y of x1. At this point, we have y of x2. At this point, we have y of x3. I'm not going into the details of finite difference method. This one is, for example, x0 is equal to a, x1, x2, x3, and x4, which is b. So all the information, all the solutions are available on the nodes. In that case, the method is called finite difference method. Since finite difference method is not a topic of this lecture series, so I will not talk about that much more on this. The second one is finite volume method. But let me just skip that finite volume method since we are going to talk about that later on in detail. Let me just discuss finite element method. Suppose we have a domain A to B, and on this domain is divided into the nodes like we have finite difference method. We have nodes like this. Now, what happens in finite element method? From these two nodes, we can construct one element. This is called element number one. This one is called element number two. This one is called element number three. And the last one is element number four. So instead of the values, the availability of values is on nodes, like in finite difference method. For finite element method, we have the solution available on the elements. That's why this numerical method is called finite element method. Finite element method is a very popular method in scientific community since it is applicable to complex geometries as well. And the last one is that we are going to discuss in this lecture series is finite volume method. What happens in finite volume method? We have a domain A to B, which is a physical domain. We make a node which is computational domain. And all the solutions are available on the volumes. This one is called volumes. Although it doesn't look like volume, but when we have x-axis, then the y-axis has length one, and the z-axis has length 1, then this is called a volume. So in one dimension, it is a length, but still we call it volume. And we will talk about that in detail later on. So in the, this case, finite volume method, we have all the information available over here, like this. So this solution is spreaded over the volumes. That's why this method is called finite volume method. Now the question arises why we are studying finite volume method when we have finite difference method available to us, finite element method is available to us and why the re the is why what is the reason that we study finite volume method? The reason is when we have discontinuous solution, then we no more can apply finite difference method. So we have to switch or we have to move towards the finite volume method. 
So this was a short introduction of these three methods, th these three numerical methods. And we gave the reason that we, why we study finite volume method. In the next lecture, I will talk about the advantages of finite difference method and disadvantages of this method, finite difference method. Thank you for watching.